Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back once again to The Correct Views. Sam I B. Deganji reporting for The Media Speaks. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com. Went live at 4. I'm getting ready at about 4.30 or so to head to Burr. 4.30 in the morning. I'm not going there to snowboard. We're going at 4.30 in the morning to snowboard. It's like 12 degrees outside. Christelle, are you going to wear anything more than a t-shirt? Nah, I was thinking it's a t-shirt. Maybe a hoodie. Some bikini bottoms. Oh yeah. yeah. All jokes aside, guys, we are going. Uh, we are going snowboarding at 4:30 into the morning, somewhere around there, in 12 degree weather. Christelle has lined up our camera with us, and uh, enough rambling. You guys came for the news, but uh, hey, it's also a, my show, and a lot of people watch it, and they uh, get off on our quirks, like snowboarding at 4:30 in the morning. Um. I'm being jovial. I'm in a good mood. Unfortunately, the news is not the good news show. That was last time. Most of the news here is rather grim. Uh, or in, uh, so I think it's kind of strange, though. This is going to be one of the more off kilt shows that I've ever done. Um, I do want to get into some Fukushima news. Uh, this is from Fukushima Diary. Radiation measurement instrument got contaminated because of too high of a level of contaminated water in the Fukushima plant. The the items they use to test how radioactive something is is getting such a high dose of radiation that it's literally cooking the machines. This happened to the robots that were uh, said to be such a thought to be such a great help when this first happened, and of course it was a disaster. Um, the robots uh, were getting nuked, uh, among other problems. They did steps very badly as well. But um, they, they were getting nuked and unable to work. Well, now the very items that test how radioactive an area is, an area that somebody's mother or father is working in, those are now contaminated. It's like getting a virus sick. And there's no other way to describe it. Listen to this. Um, some of, and again, if it sounds choppy, it's because it was probably written in Japanese and converted to English. I'm not drunk. Some of the radiation measurement instruments are contaminated in Fukushima nuclear plant. MRA revealed in Sea Monitoring Commission on 127-2014. It is because they measured the contaminated water samples that are too radioactive. There's a link for this. keeps trying to cut out. So hopefully you guys are all still with me. Um, go to the Fukushima Diary.com. It's so bad, literally, that we don't even know how bad we're being juiced. We cannot even reliably test how bad they're getting juiced because everything that you bring, even the items that test it become new. They're useless. They're 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 broken. They're cooked. And yet people in that area decide that they want to go back home and move back into their houses. You can't move back into your house. TEPCO has ruined that for you. Guys, this is uh, what, uh, whatchinatimes.com. PLA may have 600 nuclear warheads in 10 years, a Russian expert said. China, if they were a, a, a democracy of some kind, they might have a chance of really leading the world. I mean, they're the only people that can have a billion troops on the ground. That's unheard of. China's trouble is that they are a communist nation, and communist nations always destroy themselves from the top down. And you saw it in the Soviet Union, and you're going to see it here with China. We're already seeing it with China. They have masses of dead pigs floating down the river. Um, it, it, a lot of things there don't add up. They're, they're, they're a communist country that has a lot of people. And a lot of those people 
<clears throat> in certain areas are rather well educated. But there's a reason we send our jobs to them, which should be illegal, by the way, um, and let them work for mere dollars a day at best. And it's because of that that their ultimate strategies will never really make them a powerhouse uh, until they change them. They're also very short-sighted. They don't realize, and these idiots on here say that China will have enough uh, nuclear warheads to make Japan wiped off the earth. Yeah, that radioactivity wouldn't do anything to you, China. You guys aren't already getting nuked from Fukushima. No, that doesn't happen to communist countries. The radiation goes around you because you're smiling. While claiming that the People's Liberation Army is unable to compete against the United States in a full-scale nuclear war, Vasily Kashin from the Moscow-based Center for Analysis of Strategies and Technologies <coughs> stated that China has the ability to wipe Japan from the face of the Earth when its projected arsenal of at least 600 nuclear warheads in 10 years' time reports the voice of Russia on the voice of stupidity coming out of China. China does not have enough advanced ballistic missiles and nuclear submarines and strategic bombers to match the United States, Cashin said. And the only way that the country can defend itself from a nuclear attack is to accumulate as many warheads as it can. And no one's going to nuke you, China. You've stolen all of our jobs. And if we nuke you, we won't be able to uh, have things like transformers. Uh, Long-time viewers know I'm not just rambling here. If we were to have an, a pulse or some kind of other disaster that destroyed a lot of Transformers in America, it would take us years, or up to two years, to get Transformers back. We don't make them in this country. One of the only places I believe we get them from is China, but I know for sure we don't make them in this country. Let me go on to this real quick. This, this is just stupid. It, it hurts my brain to report on it. If the current trend continues, the PLA will have at least 600 nuclear warheads in the next 10 years, Kashin said. More than Great Britain and France, but fewer than the United States and Russia. With the United States reducing the number of its warheads, it is conceivable that China may have the same number at some point in the future, Kashin said. But if China is unable to threaten all major cities in the, United, in the continental United States, its warheads are still capable of completely destroying U.S. allies in the Asia-Pacific region, such as Japan and South Korea. Yeah, I'm sure Japan and South Korea wouldn't do anything to defend themselves. Uh, Japan's still allowed to defend itself. Um, the Tokyo-based Japan Military Review, meanwhile, stated that China has three major submarine bases in Shizukao, in Qingdao, in Xiaoping Island in Dalian and Yalong Bay in Fainan. From the Shizuku base, the PLA Navy's ballistic missile submarines can sail to the northern Bohai Bay, the exclusive economic zone between China and North Korea. You know, if people act like they can nuke their neighbor and it's not going to hurt them, like China can just wipe out Japan. And it's not going to affect any Chinese seafood at all. It's not going to affect the Chinese air. None of the other Orients even going to be hurt from Japan being, nah, not at all. That's like saying that your neighbor's meth lab isn't a threat to you when it blows up. Um, ExtremeTech.com, Stephen Hawking is a new research there on our black holes. The trouble is Stephen Hawking has lost all credibility. Uh, really, um, I, I know the man has done wonderful things, but for one thing, we're not even sure that quantum physics is on the right path. There's a lot of things that he might not, even, I mean, there are, there, for those of you that don't know, there's a two major sides to physics. He seems to think uh, and speak like quantum is the only theory there is. And uh, I had a, a teacher once in college point this out to me. Uh, I had mentioned to her the idea that there are a million different universes all happening at one time. And she said, nature tends to make things. God tends to make things. For some kind of purpose, usually. And there wouldn't be a purpose to that. Well, if the universe is a simulation, you could argue that, in fact, there could be. Look that up if you don't know. 
Um, the trouble with Stephen Hawking is, is he's one of these boneheads that believe that something came out of nothing. Um, I don't know if maybe he's a little spiteful at the notion of a creator because his life, uh, for those of you that don't know, has been spent in a wheelchair and it must have been absolute hell. Um, or if he's just that short-sighted. I mean, I'm not saying you should you have to believe in a creator. That is great. But the science tends to point to this being a created universe. The more and more science we see, the more and more we see that to be the case. Um, some people have said aliens created us. Uh, who created the aliens? The point is we're finding in many ways that things have a certain structure. Things tend to have a, a look like a system. Something coming from nothing. I mean, for so many of us that follow this stuff, um, He's lost a lot of credibility. So, I mean, anything he says now, you just question. Having said that, he's done a lot in the deep field, so we will at least listen to the man. And uh, leave your comments. Let me know what you think. Exactly 40 years after famed theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking brought event horizons and black holes into the public eye, he is now claiming that black holes don't actually exist. Uh, keep Remember that sentence, by the way. Instead of all-consuming <clears throat> event horizons and black holes which nothing can escape from, Hawking now proposes that there are apparent horizons which suck in matter and energy and only temporarily before eventually releasing them again. Sounds like Beyonce. To be clear, Hawking isn't proposing that black holes don't exist. That's what you just said up top. Just the black holes, as we've understood them for the last 40 years or so, thanks to the work done by Hawking and others, don't exist. The current understanding, it says, is that black holes are surrounded by an event horizon, a boundary of space-time which only allow matter and energy to pass through one way towards the black hole. It is, in other words, the point of no return. This is why black holes appear black, because energy can't escape, and so they produce no light and no heat. In thermodynamic terms, the black hole is a perfect black body, an object that absorbs all energy and radiation. The problem that goes on with this theory, though, is that it's based on general relativity. In recent years, as our understanding of quantum theory has improved, and again, we question it, numerous conflicts have arisen, especially in places where both theories apply, such as black holes and event horizons. Basically, Quantum mechanics has a big issue with the idea that event horizons completely and utterly destroy information. That's a big no-no in the world of quantum. So even though we're seeing that it does happen, because the theory of quantum doesn't allow it to happen, we're just going to rewrite the science. Hawking's new proposal tries to ameliorate uh, the conflict between the two theories. Give me my screen back. Hate when pages do that. The two theory in a short research paper called Information Preservation and Weather Forecasting for Black Holes, Hawking proposes that black holes are instead enveloped by an apparent horizon. Maybe it is. I'm not dispelling, by the way. I'm just saying he's somebody that I've learned to question. Basically, instead of any event horizon that blocks everything absolutely, an apparent horizon suspends matter and energy from trying to escape, and when it does escape, Due to wild fluctuations within the black hole and its apparent horizon, the energy could be released in a garbled form. Hawking likens these fluctuations to weather on Earth. <clears throat> it can be like weather forecasting. That is unitary but chaotic, so there are, is effective information loss. One can't predict the weather more than a few days in advance. And it says that uh, unilarity is part of the quantum theory that strongly disapproves of event horizons being the point of no return. Um, Let's face it, um, I've always thought that it was possible that uh, it, it, something is getting out of this. I've never really believed Hawking the first time around. I actually believe this more than I believe what he said before. Uh, look it up. I don't want to bore those that don't like the science parts of the show. Um, <clears throat> but at any event, make sure you uh, need to question what Hawking says, because he's come up with some dumb things. <clears throat> and he's come up with some brilliant things. If you have a chance, go to the Arcadia Grill. It's in downtown Canton, Ohio, located on Court Avenue.
Um, it's got an amazing rating here on Facebook. Uh, one, two, three, four and a half out of five stars, 585 likes, 113 ratings. It is delicious. Go to the Arcadia Grill. Tell them Sam sent you from the correct views, and if you want to know what you should order, I recommend the ravioli. Um, every time I go there, I get the ravioli. Their bread is out of this world, and they've got a full bar of drinks made kindly. Go to the correct views, tell them that Sam, I go, go to the Arcadia Grill and tell them that Sam from the correct views sent you. Um, these two stories go together, and if you're not a big science person, it doesn't matter. This is so unbelievably interesting that I couldn't believe I'm the only one that is in my sphere that's reporting on this. I tend to be falling over the same articles a few people have, but this has not gotten the attention that it deserves. Independent.co.uk, NASA says a Mars mystery rock that appeared from nowhere is like nothing that we've seen before. A mysterious rock which appeared in front of the Opportunity rover is like nothing we've ever seen before, according to Mars exploration scientists at NASA. This gets real interesting, guys, because the, the just because something smells like a rat doesn't mean that it is a rat. but you still let out mousetraps. This gets creepy. Experts said they were completely confused by both the origins and makeup of the object, which is currently being investigated by Opportunity's various measuring instruments. Astronomers noticed the new rock had appeared without any explanation on an outcrop, which had been empty just days earlier. The rover has been st stuck photographing the same region of Mars for more than a month due to bad weather with scientists at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California monitoring the images that sent. Uh, it ended up being 12 days, by the way. It went, over, it went over this area, and then the rock appeared 12 days later. But there's some questioning about whether this is a rock, and I'm going to get into that. NASA issued a Mars status report entitled, Encountering a Surprise, and lead Mars exploration rover scientist Steve Whereas told the JPL event, it means the planet literally keeps throwing new things at us. He said the images from 12 were from 12 Martian days apart, were from no more than a couple of weeks ago. We saw this thing just sitting there. It looks white around the edge, and in the middle, there's a low spot in the center that's dark red. It looks like a jelly donut. And it appeared just, plain appeared at that spot, and we, and we haven't ever driven over that spot. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. Do you really think the Mars rover just happened to hit a rock, right? And this expensive thing, just rolling along, smacks into a rock. Or kicks the rock up with its, uh, it looks like it's got uh, six rounds. Not even, keep in mind, friends, it's not, it's not like tank tires. It's, uh, it's wheels. It's, it's regular wheels. That they ran this thing over, but it was absolutely unnoticed. And they, they kicked it under their tire. That's what they're saying that they think happened. Because, listen here, don't, don't zone out because it gets much creepier. This rock appeared from nowhere on Mars. Or well, must have been something we kicked up when we were driving by. Would you believe that if your kid was in the cookie jar, he just his fell in it, his arm fell in it? Come on! Um, again, am I saying it was put there? That's not where I'm going. It's, it doesn't go in the direction of Little Green Men. Stay with me. Um, he said the uh, and it appeared just a plane. It just plain appeared at that spot, and we haven't ever driven over that spot. He said there's a team. They have two theories on how the rock got there, and that there's a quote a smoking hole in the ground somewhere nearby, and it was caused by a meteor or that it was somehow flicked off to the ground by the wheel as the rover went by. Um, I've seen the black and white images. I've also seen the colored ones. Uh, I guess the colored ones are colored the way NASA wants them to be. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, they look legitimate to me. But it, it's, it's, it stands out. It's not something that you would have missed. It, it simply isn't. We had driven by a meter or two away from there, so I think the idea that somehow we mysteriously flicked it with the wheel is the best explanation, Square has said. It's a better explanation coming up. 
It says the story got even stranger when opportunity investigated further. Square is explained. We are, as we speak, situated with the rover's instruments deployed making measurements of this rock. We've taken pictures of both the donut and jelly parts, because it looks like a jelly donut. And we got the first data from the composition of the jelly yesterday. It's like nothing that we've ever seen before, he said. It's very high in sulfur, and it's very high in magnesium. It's got twice as much magnesium as we've ever seen on anything on Mars. I don't know what any of this means. We're completely confused, and everyone in the team is arguing and fighting over what it means. And he says that's the beauty of the mission. All right. So, Sam, 4.20 in the morning, I'm listening to you, and you're telling me little green men put a rock on Mars. That's what you think happened. No, that is not what I think happened. What might have happened, I'm not saying it is. What sprouts in 12 days? Sometimes by itself. Mushrooms. Weeds. Am I saying it was mushrooms? No. But I'm saying that they at least suspect more than we're being told. Please listen to this. This is from the blaze. This is why I'm doing this. This gets creepy. Man actually suing NASA for refusal to adequately investigate alien life on Mars. This author thinks he should be the one to be allowed to tell whether or not it's life. I don't see why he shouldn't be allowed to be part of the team, but he's a little bit godlike here in his own mind to think that he should be the one. But in any event, um, this guy may be on to something here. As astrobiologists filed a lawsuit Monday against NASA, alleging that the agency wasn't doing enough to adequately investigate the possibility of alien life, specifically the mysterious rock on Mars that I just talked about. Ron Joseph, uh, who has published articles in the Journal of Cosmology, a journal that has questionable repute among some scientists, can be a little weird, filed the lawsuit in California court against NASA and its administrator, Charles Bolton. He asked that the agency be compelled to, quote, thoroughly <clears throat> scientifically investigate a putative biological organism on Mars identified slash discovered by petitioner and refer to NASA as unlike anything that we've ever seen before. Steve Squares of NASA, that's who we were just quoting, by the way, and did in fact label the rock on Mars as unlike anything he's ever seen, but they're pretty definitive that it is a rock. Whether he is referring to the same jelly donut shaped rock that was missing in the earlier photo snapped by the rover, Opportunity, they spelled it differently on this one, on one mission and then spotted shortly after in the same location on another mission is unclear based on the news release. Joseph in the lawsuit wrote that he examined the images of the rock and believes it to look like a mushroom-like fungus. The trouble is when you look at this in both the black and white and the color, I don't care if this guy believes in a flat earth and a tinfoil hat. Um, I could see where this could possibly be a mushroom. Uh, I think suing NASA is probably something he knows isn't going to happen. But it's not like NASA is going to say, okay, and bring him into the team. But it would be nice to have some of what uh, he'd like to see happen happen because I think NASA NASA might you know be hiding something or maybe it would it would make people really happy to have this studied. How's that? To him, the obvious conclusion in this case is that the object is alive and grew into the structure depicted when NASA's rover team took photos 12 Martian days earlier. Joseph believes the structure has spores that, when exposed to the Martian weather, began to grow. NASA had hypothesized that the rock, dubbed a Pinnacle Island, may have been flipped upside down when a dog lodged it, dislodged it. When a uh, didn't lodge, when a wheel dislodged it, providing an unusual circumstance for examining the underside of the Martian rock. According to Joseph, NASA refused to release high-resolution photos of the structure. Um, I don't know if these are high-res or not. I'm looking at some pictures. The petitioner made these discoveries, whereas the rover team did not, simply because NASA's rover team inexplicably failed to perform the basic demands of science, which is research, look again. Research and look again, Joseph's lawsuit said. 
Joseph wrote that he asked NASA scientists about taking higher resolution photos and alleged that NASA refused. The refusal to take close-up photos from various angles, the refusal to take microscopic images of the specimen, refused to release high resolution photographs is inexplicable, recklessly negligent, and bizarre, he wrote. I don't care if the guy's in that case. I think he has a point in everything that he just said. Comment line. Any intelligent adult, adolescent child, chimpanzee, monkey, dog, or rodent with even a modicum of curiosity would approach, investigate, and closely examine a bowl-shaped structure which appears just a few feet in front of them when 12 days earlier they hadn't noticed it. I don't care if he's nuts, everything he said there is a correct view. Um, Joseph called NASA's hypothesis that it was an overturned rock or something that dropped there as a result of a meteor bizarre and absurd, ignorant and little more than magical thinking. Joseph asked that NASA be required to examine the structure further and if they find it to be a biological organism, that he be listed as the first author on its scientific articles about such a discovery. Um, uh, you know what, maybe. But he has a point there, friends. He really, really does. Um, guys, it is time for the dunce of the day. Um, I really don't know if I'm, I've said this before, going to keep the dunce cap of the month going. It's anywhere from 12 bucks to do, but sometimes it can be like 50 freaking dollars. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I picked the stupidest person, stupidest organization. I've sent them to cops. I've sent them to uh, wildlife. I've sent them to people that put radioactivity in our silverware. Um, I send dunce caps and uh, award certificates out to idiots. That gets very expensive to do, so I don't know if I'm going to stay with it. Let me know if you really like the dunce cap of the month. Please donate to me at hot, uh, the correct views at hotmail.com. If you'd like to uh, help out with the costs or whatever, let me know if you want to keep them going. Uh, I am going to stay with the, uh, the dunce of the day very often. And uh, this is the gentleman that wins it. Pizza delivery man arrested after being caught on the hidden camera having sex with the family dog. A Papa John's delivery man in Florida has been arrested and charged after he was allegedly caught on hidden camera having sex with the family dog. Joshua Lee Rubicki, 22, was taken into custody on Friday at the Palm Bay restaurant where he works and charged with felony cruelty to animals, a misdemeanor criminal act with an animal after a video was handed over to the police. Now, see, I, Christelle, she, she's getting kind of warm. I can tell you, get all warmed up here. Brrr, this is terrible. Where Becky's roommate set up the camera after she became suspicious when the dog and German Shepherd mix began limping and became startled around the people. Brevard County Animal Services Sergeant Michael Healy told the news website FloridaToday.com that Florida law allows the possibility of a court ordered injunction barring Rebecca from having future unsupervised contact with other animals. That might be a good idea. Um, Brevard County Animal Services Sergeant Michael Healy told, uh, yeah, he was for that. He's being held on $2,500 bond. If you want to get him out, Krista, I think, yeah, because she's, she's writing a check. In August, a registered sex offender in Florida was arrested for having sex with a dog a week after being on jail for bestiality charges involving another pooch. James Lyons, 52, from St. Augustine, was taken into custody after police said he sexually abused his neighbor's dog. So anyway, uh, let me say, the dunce of the day goes to Papa John, delivery driver Joshua Lee, Rebecca, 22, dog lover. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Let others know what's going on in the world. Not necessarily the dog guy, but I get the radiation stuff. I do this for a reason. The science stuff. You know what? You're not going to get it anywhere else. Um, the, the news about Russia. Uh, Russia. Well, Russia said about China, I should say. Um, they're running up a nuclear arsenal there. And I'm going to stay on it. I need your help. So stay with me, people, and thank you for watching. I've been getting more views between the two sites than I have probably ever as far as consistent views go. So thank you, friends. Good night. God bless.